The new EU tyre label will be compulsory as of November 2012. You will likely notice the effects of the label when your vehicle needs new tyres, like our Tina tyre here. So what awaits you when you visit a tyre retailer? We can see right away if the tyres differ in three key criteria. This is made easy by the colour charts and the values representing the so-called pass-by noise. And yet, it can still be quite confusing at first. Tina is already partially familiar with the system used for refrigerators. The more energy efficient a refrigerator is, the greener the graphic. But she has no idea what all this means when it comes to tyres. The tyre retailer explains to Tina the information shown on the new EU tyre label and which individual characteristics it addresses. The label focuses on three key characteristics of a tyre. Energy efficiency, tyre grip on wet roads and the intensity of the pass-by noise. For the first two criteria, A is the best mark. For pass-by noise, the absolute value is given in decibels. This makes sense for the consumer and provides an instant overview. Of course, Tina also wants to know exactly what the individual points mean. The question is, what impact do the individual points have? To find this out, Tina goes home to do some research. First of all, Tina looks at the energy efficiency of the tyre or the influence on her vehicle's fuel consumption. Reducing the rolling resistance always saves fuel and with it CO2 emissions. What difference does a B tyre make compared with a C tyre? Let's put it to the test. The test begins in Hanover. A tyre from fuel category C uses almost exactly 0.1 more litres of fuel over a distance of 100 kilometres or 62 miles than a tyre from category B. But does this also apply to long distances? To find this out, the journey continues south. Tina travels the length of Germany, then onto the border, through Switzerland and down to northern Italy. The journey ends in Milan after 1,000 kilometres or 625 miles. It's true, the C tyre has now used over one litre of fuel more than a tyre from Class B and the calculations can continue in the same way. A tyre from Class E uses around two litres more fuel over the same distance and a tyre from Class F uses three litres more than a tyre from Class B. D has not been given a value. So the issue of fuel is cleared up. What about braking distance on wet roads? Tina does the test. A car with tyres in braking distance class A stops in the shortest time from a speed of 80 km per hour, that's 50 miles per hour. A car with tyres from class B stops between 3 and 6 metres later. Class C tyres need between another 3 and 6 metres to come to a standstill, and the same applies to classes E and F. D and G have not been given a value. In concrete terms, this means there is a difference of over 18 metres between the braking distance for class A and class F. Now for the final point, noise levels. Tina learns that there are three classes that characterise the external noise of a tyre. The different noise symbols on the label show the absolute decibel values. OK, Tina now has all the information she needs. She returns to her tyre retailer armed with her newfound knowledge. The sales representative also explains that if Tina wants to find out more about tyre performance, then a complete understanding of tyres' overall performance can be found in the extensive tyre tests carried out by independent magazines and consumer associations. These tests investigate all the various factors such as aquaplaning characteristics or handling on wet and dry roads not included in the tyre label. Both parties agree. While the label provides a good overview, it cannot replace an independent test or a consultation with the specialist tyre retailer.